Emotiva, the Stealth Bomber, black or black finish option giving, folded ribbon tweeter extravaganza. Is that imitation leather? Today we take a look at the Emotiva T2 Plus. It's a 56 pound floor standing speaker with a 32 millimeter air motive folded ribbon tweeter, five and a quarter inch mid range, as well as dual eight inch woven fiber woofers in a large ported cabinet. We have a lot going on here in this value proposition speaker. You generally don't see this much going on at a speaker at this price point. And where that concerned me was the big box store effect. These are not sold in a big box store as they are a direct consumer brand. But speakers that offer a lot without carrying the heavy price tag are oftentimes the offenders of this type of characteristics. Oftentimes some of the speakers featured in department stores have a certain look or sound that is more for marketing than it is actually for performance once you bring that product home. The first concern for myself with this one was the large 8 inch woofers. Is this going to be a giant V curve with overblown bass? I would just assume pass on a speaker that sounds like a manatee passing gas. Good news? No Manatee audio today. This was actually a really neutral sound. The lows are far from overpronounced on these, and the actual speaker itself is borderline neutral. I will go into more detail on the lows, mids, and highs a little later, but we have avoided what can be a fatal flaw of the big blocks dilemma. You can see the same type of thing for TVs, for example. They usually crank the brightness up far beyond what you would actually use in your home, then slap on some hand-picked video, and you can make a TV appear far more dynamic than real life. Basically, the image in the store is just for looks. For the most part, there's nothing natural or realistic about it. And that's another item we avoided with these speakers. They are not the look for everyone, but they are certainly emotiva. They, they toe the line. Not overstated or overreaching in any way, but they're very much so black on black without many details to really draw you in besides the stealth look on the front baffle. If you take a look, the general construction on these is pretty good. And the actual vinyl is a change of pace from the imitation wood that we often see. It's more of what I would consider a leather imitation, but it does hold up really well from what I've gathered from my past experiences, as I have the same finish on a pair of B1 Pluses for a long time now, and I move those speakers around a lot and I haven't had any damage at all. Getting right into the sound, the bass has deep extension, as you would assume on a design like this that has two 8-inch woofers. It hits hard, and you do get some usable extension into the 30 hertz range, where you can really appreciate the bass presence. I didn't detect any noticeable bass bump like I mentioned above. They seem to have a smooth roll-off. Depending on your use case, you're likely to still have a sub in the chain. Home theater, almost certainly. But for two-channel listening, that one will be a little bit more subjective and possibly the deciding point there might be the type of music that you actually listen to. I mentioned neutral earlier, and the bass from these certainly isn't what I expected. Nothing is really overblown or overstated here. These are actually voice like a more expensive speaker, not reaching for anything, really just letting the cards fall as they may. The mid-range is detailed and presents with a good amount of texture. The best way I can describe it is a sense of balance is maintained at all times. It won't be overexciting in any way, like I said, these are the characteristics of a neutral sound, after all. The tweeter on these is slightly forward, certainly not sharp or bright. I would say these come across less bright than my B1+, Plus, which can bring a bit of exaggeration in the highs on particular songs. There's likely a small bump here. As I stated, they sound slightly forward, but in my opinion, it's not a large bump in the highs. If you only listen to very warm speakers, they may seem a little bright to you, but comparing these to particular speakers with strong V-curves, these won't be over the top by any means as far as brightness goes. I also found you could tame these quite a bit with the placement. If your desired response is to take a little bit of the bite out of the highs, just tow these straight ahead rather than towed into the listener. That should take off any edge that you were looking to avoid. Now, are these more for home theater speakers or two-channel stereo? I'm gonna say my preference for these would likely be home theater, but they have the voicing that makes a fantastic two-channel listen as well. This is where I was most surprised with these. I was fully expecting to only test these for home theater duties, but surprisingly, I feel like these are a great option for the hybrid user who wants the full home theater experience, but possibly doesn't have the space to put together a separate two-channel system. For home theater duties, I did not have their center channel in place, but these image dead center without really any fuss. The soundstage is the wall of sound type, Decent vertical and horizontal off-axis listening. Room size really won't be a concern here. 
I have these in a large space, open to other rooms, and have no issues, nor would I really expect to have any with a speaker of this size. When it comes to actually driving these, the speakers have a sensitivity of 91 dB, so powering these isn't going to be an issue at all. About the only thing I can say is to make sure that your amplifier is stable to 4 ohms. For my testing, I had these being driven by an Audiolab 6000A, which is connected to my Denon receiver using home theater bypass. The Denon handles the processing duties for home theater, and the better amp in the audio lab takes care of the amplification. This test is actually what led me on the realization of these being a great hybrid speaker. The way my system is set up, I can have the Denon receiver in the loop for TV and movies, and then completely remove it for streaming, having everything go through the audio lab. The bass output and extension was great for movies, as well as the fold and ribbon tweeter for all the details and shine. But at the same time, moving over to music, I was greeted with a mostly neutral sound that was easy to work with for a wide variety of music. This TA1 integrated amp is one that I actually own. I purchased it early in my YouTube channel as a review piece. If you want to stay in the Emotiva family, it's a great budget option coming in much cheaper than some of the other integrated amps out there. It's actually more of a receiver as it does have a tuner, which is something you don't see very often anymore. It puts out around 100 watts per channel at 4 ohms, and gets you into an amplifier with bass management, plenty of analog inputs, including phono. It has digital, Bluetooth, and even a headphone amplifier. So if you're looking to stay within the Emotiva lineup, and want to put together a relatively budget system, you could check out this TA1, or step up to the TA2. A few other minor details with these. The outrigger feet are what I have in use here, but these also come with detachable spikes that screw directly into these feet. There is also a magnetic grill that attaches to the front baffle. It comes in black, go figure, right? Uh, glad to see it's magnetic rather than the pin designs though. Well, what else do we have? Uh, these ship free and come with a five-year warranty. As you likely know, Emotiva is a direct-to-consumer brand, and I feel like that is one of the key ways they're able to produce high-value products like this. No middleman, just how I like it really. Recently, I've reviewed other direct-to-consumer brands such as Bucart or the DIY products from CSS. It's often nice to work with these companies like this. In my experience, they're always a little bit easier to work with in the event that you do have issues. You don't end up in some ticketing queue talking to someone who really has no investment or real world experience with the products. These direct-to-consumer brands almost always have great support teams and actually know their product lines. So that really does it for today. As always, I appreciate it if you made it this far. Please consider liking and subscribing for more future content. Thanks, talk to you later.